Hey, welcome to another Live with Tim. It is such a great opportunity to come back to you live and in color from your nation's capital. We are here once again to have a conversation with another person who will provide insight and opportunities for us to try to have an equilibrium about some of the very important issues confronting America. Uh, as you know, we're working on the COVID-19 relief packages. We are certainly going to do all that we can to, to put ourselves in the best position to succeed. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with my guest, uh, my guest today is a very strong actor. Uh, Chris was with us. Chris Evans, how are you, man? <laughs> how are you? Very well. It's my first Instagram Live. I love it. This is fantastic. I like when people do this the first time with us. I will say that I'm a huge fan of Marvel, and you know uh, I'm a few, huge fan of Captain America, and you are Captain America. So I know we're not necessarily here to have a conversation about the next iteration of Marvel movies or what Captain America is going to do next, but there is a special young man in South Carolina. His name is Nathan Branton. He's 16 years old. Uh, he's in the hospital at Medical University, and he had one question. I wanted to get you to answer the question. He wants to know... Why is Captain America worthy of Thor's hammer? Now, that's an important question. As a kid who grew up uh, reading comic books about Thor, Captain America, Black Falcon, that's a great question. Why is Captain America worthy of Thor's that's a great hammer? I mean, it's, it's a great question. Uh, I, I mean, I, I think it's because he's dedicated his life uh, to, to the service of others. Um, I, I think he's... Uh, brave, and I think he's selfless, and I, I think he he has all the traits of a hero. But but it's not something he was just born with, you know. I think he was born with the potential. Yes. But 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 to have that perspective takes work, it takes practice, and I think I think his perspective, being someone who came from from very you know humble beginnings, someone who didn't have any sort of advantages, it bred a certain amount of empathy in him, and he hung on to that empathy, and that empathy. That compassion for his fellow man was his North Star. And as a result, uh, not just what he was given from birth in terms of his, you know, his nature, but, but, but what he worked on as a result of his circumstance grew him into a man that was, that was worthy, in my opinion. Well, that's a great answer. Thank you very much, Chris. Okay. Now, I'll say this uh, to Nathan. We both hope that you get well soon. Uh, thank you for A, participating today and B, watching. And we're going to now bridge over to a more serious, uh, not frankly more serious for Nathan, because Nathan Thor's hammer is about as serious as it gets. I kind of agree <laughs> with that one. Yes. However, to transition over to a more politically centric sure. part of the conversation, let me yeah. say this, that Thor's hammer and the integrity of Thor's hammer is really important to having a platform designed around giving both sides of, of, of arguments or of issues a chance to be heard in your own voice and something that you're doing that I, I got to say, I respect it. We may not agree on all the issues, but I really respect that you are taking the time to hear both sides of issues through your new platform. And I frankly just uh, recently talked about school choice on a platform that you're responsible for. Will you talk about that for just a minute or two? Sure. Yeah. Well, well, the platform is called the starting point that you were very kind to participate in. And yeah, you did just contribute. You continue to contribute. You've been a huge help to us. Uh, but yeah, the, the platform is designed primarily to create participation, because I do think you need an electorate that is involved in the political process. But I also think people are very um, I think people are a little exhausted with this polarized um, aggression that, that we feel when we when we tune into the political landscape feels uh, a little a little harsh right now and yes. i and i think if we can return to a place of civil discourse we can return to a place of uh subtlety within the way we see things again i you know i'm a democrat there's no secret there but but that doesn't mean i have to you know it, it doesn't mean out of the gate that everything i believe is automatically democratic i think it's it's and you know and that that may, may maybe it is but but i still think it's important to to be a well-rounded person you need to hear um, the, 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 the full story, you need to hear multiple perspectives to pull your information from a variety of places can only lead to a more thorough understanding, not only of the issue, but, but a more thorough understanding of yourself and, and, yes. and, how, you, and how you choose to engage. So, so again, it's, it's almost like a naughty word these days to, to say you want to hear a variety of opinions because, again, we, we are so polarized. But 
I, I think if we can kind of gently bring that into the discussion, I do think there are more things that we have in common than there are things that divide us. I think you're right, Chris. And here's one of the things that I, I one of the reasons why I respect your position. I, I'm obviously a very clear and consistent Republican with conservative values that spring from my faith and from my experience, uh, from my childhood, and frankly, as a business owner, from my business uh, misfortune and fortune. Uh, and, and so that's the place where one of the things I have appreciated about our conversations in the past is that you and I seem to agree to disagree without being disagreeable. And that is lost in the public forum. And if we don't actually have the ability to have a serious conversation about the issues that we must confront as a country and hear both sides before drawing conclusions, it'll be very hard for us to move forward. And equally important, if you are demonizing my intentions, not my position, but my intentions, that makes it even harder for America to move forward. And it's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you uh, on the Instagram Live, but more importantly, your first Instagram Live. So thank you for, uh, A, giving me a chance to discuss with you conservative issues like school choice. And you have other folks uh, on your side. I think you had Will Hurd on one side and another person talking about AI and the mm -hmm. importance of artificial intelligence. So what, what I'm seeing on your side is a chance for people to be heard in their own voice, not nuances of what they're talking about, not snippets, but a real conversation, a dialogue. And that is so, so important for the yeah. nation because I agree that we have probably 80 or 90% in common on the different sides. The key, is where we don't see eye to eye. Can we even talk about it? And that yeah. seems to be lost art in today's public forum. And that truly is an issue. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, one, one of the things that, this is a line that I heard a lot when I was in DC is that uh, no one gets the whole loaf, you know right. what I mean? And, yeah. and that, that's a tough pill to swallow for some people, especially when you drift into issues that, you know, where, where uh, you know, basic human rights are, are in jeopardy. And, 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 and again, in, in order to move the ball down the field, in order to make any sort of progress, you have to accept the fact that people who think differently than you, people who have opinions that you may even deem, you know, straight up immoral, they still have a voice, they still have a vote. And, and if you think you can just yell louder than them to, to get things done, that just leaves everybody screaming. You know, yeah. I, I, I really think the first step should be not, not, not to win, but to change a mind. Right. And, and, and I mean, that, that's the way I think that extends not just, you know, in the political world, but, you know, in, in your personal life, whether it's a family relationship, a friend, a romantic relationship. The, the, the first step is to listen. The first step is to say, OK, I hear what you're saying. This is where I disagree. And, and if you have the, the bandwidth, the ability to kind of stay calm and patient and, and make the goal, again, not trying to win, but, but trying to open someone else's perspective a little bit, it, it just it, it downshifts everyone's energy. And it just kind of returns us back to a place of seeing each other as people and seeing where we agree as opposed to how we disagree. Well, that's awesome. And thank you for what you're doing on that front. And I hope we have more time in the future to have a longer conversation about some of the actual underlying issues. As you know, they've called votes. I'm in the middle of vote series, so I'm going to have to run back in a second. But I do want to ask you one final question. You have Please. obviously succeeded at a major level in your chosen path uh, professionally. If you had any uh, tidbits of advice for someone who wants to start a business, so like your platform's a kind of not a business, but it's certainly a way of reaching out to people. If you wanted to give one piece of advice to folks who are starting a business, an entrepreneur, or someone pursuing a dream, uh, in the midst of this pandemic and challenging times, what piece of encouragement would you provide the listeners? Uh, what piece of encouragement? Um, that that whatever your initial idea is, you, you have to be fluid with it. I mean, things, things change. I mean, even, even this site, you know, I had a certain idea in my head, and then I partnered with people who were better than me, smarter than me, more educated and experienced than I was. And, and in that process, things grew. So it's, it's tough to draw the line in terms of where you, uh, you know, stick to your uh, integrity and say, no, that's, that's not where I'm willing to compromise. And then when you say, you know what, actually, that's a better idea. And all of a sudden, the idea changes shape. So, so you, need, you need to be fluid as, as ideas grow and evolve and, and rely on the people that know more than you. And, and, and I think if you 
if, if you're too obstinate and, and you assume that you know better than anybody else, that's a step in the wrong direction. Well, thank you, Chris. Good advice for uh, many folks listening. Good advice for me as well. So thank you for your time, your energy, and your optimism about who we will be as Americans as we face issues together, even when we disagree. Uh, thanks for tuning in to another version of Live with Tim. We look forward to seeing you next time. God bless, Chris. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Likewise, my friend. Yes, sir. Take care. Bye-bye.